Good morning, I'm Pavel Cahena, I'm uh, the lead developer of the Linux System Morals project at Red Hat, and my colleague Tilmas will join me later in the presentation to show you some, some examples. So, uh, make system administration boring again. Why, why boring, uh, actually? Uh, well, there's a, there's a Chinese, uh, there's supposed to be at least a Chinese uh, curse, may you live in interesting times, which tells us that maybe interesting is not always a good thing, and what can make system administrators' life interesting in a, in a not so positive sense? Well, there are obviously many things, but I will focus on, on one in this talk, and this is uh, changes in system interfaces, because the administrators' interfaces are uh, in general less stable than, for instance, APIs, and if, if you log into uh, various Unix systems or even Linux distributions or even say, different versions of the same Linux distribution, you will find out that you have quite a uh, similar user, user experience. We, you have just, uh, mostly the same applications we, which behave mostly the same way. But on the other hand, the administrator experience will be very different. And uh, this, of course, has a negative impact on the administrator's life because even when we upgrade from uh, one major version to another major version of the same distro, our automation like shell scripts will, will break and our habits will be no longer relevant. And in general, it breaks our workflows sometimes not in so really close ways, uh, like in this example. So, uh, in general, uh, we believe that Linux needs a simple uh, simple management, and uh, because uh, it's perceived by the administrators that Linux is too hard to, to manage, in part because of the problem of instability of the interfaces I highlighted in the previous slide. And also, obviously, we need automated management. And for this, we have, we have configuration management tools like, like Ansible. By the way, if you are interested more in the interactive uh, experience and less into automa by automation, the, uh, there is a tool called Cockpit, and there was a presentation just, just before me about, about the Cockpit project. But anyway, how can uh, these automated uh, management systems help with the uh, interface evolution problem? Well, I believe uh, it's a great way to address this problem, because in, in Ansible, you declare system state uh, the desired system state, instead of writing shell, shell scripts, you declare it using playbooks. But this is just the beginning, of course, because the playbooks can break if, if the interfaces change, just as the, as the shell script uh, can do. So uh, how to address this, uh, this problem? Again, Ansible provides already some, some mechanisms. And for instance, uh, Ansible uh, has uh, some uh, modules, actually action plugins, which can abstract away the differences, like the package uh, module can abstract the differences among the actual package uh, management implementations, like YAM or APT. There's a service module, which sets an abstraction above uh, various systems, like systemd, abstract, or system5 in scripts. But those are very, uh, very targeted uh, by targeted modules by purpose because modules in Ansible are targeted to one specific, one specific case. And for more general, uh, for uh, more general cases, for more extensive uh, systems in Ansible, we have uh, roles. So uh, we decided to address the problem using uh, using Ansible roles, and uh, we created a, a project called Linux System Roles. Uh, in RHEL, we call it uh, RHEL system roles, which is a collection of Ansible roles which uh, provide stable and consistent uh, configuration interface to, uh, su to support a uh, version of operating systems, which now include uh, RHEL, CentOS, and Fedora. And uh, they are designed to manage uh, various subsystems of, of those operating systems. And with a consistent experience, it means that you write once the playbook and it will run against multiple versions. And the subsystems that we manage are, uh, now are time synchronization, key dump, network, postfix, and CLinux. We have a beta version of a storage uh, role, and 
we have a logging role in progress, and in future we may add, add roles like firewall or hardware management. So how uh, we do it, actually? Some, uh, in some cases, the interfaces don't evolve so much, like in the case of C Linux, and uh, they may be just changes in the names of uh, packages. So uh, this is quite easy to, uh, to handle. But in some, like, some cases, we have more drastic changes, and uh, for this, we have the concept of providers. Providers are like, different implementations of the, same, of the same functionality, for instance. Uh, for time synchronization, for the NTP protocol, we have two implementations, NTPD and Crony, and in RHEL, uh, we replaced NTPD by Crony, and of course this means that the configuration file formats and the name of the utilities now, now have changed. And this is a perfect example how we can handle this, this change. So we have a time sync call which, which has two providers, NTP uh, and Crony. Other uh, similar case is uh, network configuration because in all the versions of RHEL or Fedora, we had the init script systems where, where configuration of files were located in ETC and um, edited directly. In uh, newer versions, we have network manager. Again, two, uh, two providers for the network call. In the case of logging, we have just the RCS log provider, but there are multiple logging demons, so we may add support for FluentD if there's interest, for, for instance. And the, the point of those providers is that different providers of the same role have, the, have a common interface or at least a common, a common subset uh, of functionality. That means that you write uh, a playbook using this common interface and you don't have to worry which uh, provider is actually being used. And the role chooses the appropriate provider for the given operating system version. So now some examples. Some simple examples now with Linux. Let's say you need uh, to configure some Selenux booleans and some Selenux ports. So uh, those are the variables for the Selenux role to do this. And then you execute the, the Selenux role. And there are, there are two configuration variables, uh, for one for booleans, one for ports. Selenux booleans purge and ports purge. If, if there are uh, no, this means that those uh, modifications are applied on top of existing modifications. And if there, is, if there are yes, this means that previous modifications would be uh, dropped and only those um, uh, modifications would then exist on the system. So you would return to a clean state and apply, apply those. Uh, this is actually quite important point. So, uh, in, in case we say purge no, we declare just changes to the system, and if purge yes, we declare the complete state in our playbook. Why the purge variables are default to no? What would happen if they were default to, to yes? Uh, let's imagine, for the sake of example, that we want to configure a file server serving files using Samba, so we write a playbook, in the playbook we need to switch some, some Linux Boolean on, so uh, we put it in, into playbook, we execute the Linux role, and then we want to serve some files over NFS, so again we write a playbook for <coughs> NFS configuration, we switch some uh, uh, Linux going on in this, in this playbook, and if we have the purge yes in those playbooks, and we apply the two playbooks against the same host, which is not an unlikely scenario that we would uh, use uh, NFS and Samba on the same file server. Uh, we would just, in the second playbook, clobber the modifications in the first playbook, which is what we don't want. So that's why this uh, third variable is defaulting to, to no. Uh, now this was a very simple example, and uh, we have uh, then much more sophisticated role for network configuration, and I will invite my colleague Delmas, who is the maintainer of the network role, which is our most, most complex role, actually, and he will sh show you some example and some demo. Thank you very much, Pavel. So this is uh, just an example of the configuration for the network role, and there it happens in a one vari variable called network connection, and the important thing here is 
that instead of co um, configuring the interface, interface configuration, it's about configuring connection profiles. So this mean, for example, in the beginning, there's the connection ETH0, and there's just a name, and then it defaults to using the interface name uh, the same as the connection interface, but for example, in this case, the profile is called web on link A, and then you have to specify what's the interface name. Um, and this makes it more powerful to configure several possibilities. And also one other important thing uh, is that it abstracts the runtime state versus the persistent state. So this means that you can specify whether or not the connection profile is active individually from whether or not it's on disk. So for example, if you would like to remove a profile from your system, it might be that you still need it up until you want to reboot and then reboot in a clean new configuration. Therefore, um, you might not want the profile to go down when you just remove this. And there's something that um, is only possible if you have more than one state because um, you cannot express all these combinations. And the wall itself, it um, supports all the important configuration options. So, of course, Ethernet interfaces with IP configuration, DHCP, static, and um, network set, um, DNS settings, and of course, um, virtual interface types like bonding, VLAN bridges, and there's also support for InfiniBand and Mac, Mac VLAN. And you're probably wondering what this actually um, configures, so that's the next step. Um, I will show you what will happen when I apply this configuration. So all the important thing is it works on all uh, well releases at the same time. This would be currently six, seven, and eight beta. And um, the idea here is to configure DHCP on ETH0, to, for example, as a management interface, and at the same time have a bond interface called web bond, which is used for the application. And then for the bond, we also need to specify which members are part, and that's ETH1 and ETH2, and the configuration is basically the same except for the interface name. And another possibility um, that the network wall provides is to ensure that um, the only the configuration that you specify in your play is the configuration that's on the system, so you can really rely on having the whole network configuration in your configuration management system when the uh, system still works after you apply this role. And this is um, the last item in the list, persistent state absence. So it doesn't state a name for the connection profile, so it implies that just everything else that's not specified will be removed. And now I will show you um, a short live demo. So this is now a Fedora. Um, host with the system walls installed. I will just run Ansible Playbook. What is it called? Uh, on this playbook, and then it will run on all three machines, where six, seven, and eight. It will uh, figure out what it needs to do because, um, for example, the way six system uses InitScript as a backend, and the other systems network manager and applies the different state, and at the end we see um, all the three systems were applied successfully. And for example, you can also see that it used init scripts uh, for OS 6 and network manager for OS 7 and 8, and we can just take uh, a quick look. For example, on the well 7 machine, and see that the web bond was created successfully with both slave interfaces. Now I will um, head it over back to Pavel, who will show us the challenges that we experience and that made our life interesting, so your life can be more boring. So thank you, Till. And uh, some challenges that we encountered. So you may ask whether we are not just uh, creating uh, another standard to add to the already listing uh, li uh, long list of, of standards, uh, the infamous 15 standard. Uh, to some extent, it's so, of course true, but uh, when we are writing uh, Ansible automation, we are always uh, doing this, right? We, we always specify some 
uh, some uh, variables to our roles or playbooks, which are kind of a new standard. So it's a great opportunity to actually create a more abstract standard, which will uh, which will cover more versions of operating systems and shield us from from the uh, from the changes. Uh, there's a more serious challenge, though. Uh, for instance, uh, the postfix role, we may have noticed that we have a postfix role, and you may have asked why, why postfix and why not email, because it would make uh, great sense to have an email uh, role with uh, multiple providers, like postfix and, and send mail, maybe even exam or qmail. And we, we were thinking about this, but we, we found out that uh, just the concepts are uh, too different, and uh, it's, it uh, would be hard to, to do just an uh, email row which, uh, which would have uh, like some abstract concept which would then translate to the postfix or send mail, send mail concept. So in some cases, it is uh, just uh, not, practic not, not practical to do an abstraction because the underlying systems uh, are too wildly divergent. So of course, uh, there's always a limitation to this, to this approach. Another challenge was the granularity of, uh, of changes. I, I explained in the Linux example that we have the ability to add, just add to the previous modifications and, and expect them. Uh, but this is uh, not always the case. The Linux example was uh, kind of a perfect example of this. For instance, in the network role, we have a connection level granularity. One always must specify a complete connection. One cannot add or remove IP addresses or change only link settings with keeping the IP configuration intact, uh, except for the taking the connection down or up. And this, this may be a limitation in some cases, so we are thinking uh, of possibly extending this model in sync with uh, Ansible networking, which, which is a network uh, management for, uh, for uh, network devices like, like switches. And actually, uh, today at 1 p.m., there will be a an, an, uh, presentation about the NMS state project, which provides an uh, Ansible interface uh, to network manager, which is uh, compatible with Ansible networking, and which allows to do those uh, incremental updates to the uh, network configuration. Uh, in the case of TimeSync uh, and KeyDump, uh, we always replace the complete configuration except for preserving the previous provider because TimeSync role detects a uh, currently running provider and uh, keeps, uh, keeps uh, the currently running one because we just uh, thought it, it would not be practical to, uh, to, for instance, add a new NTP servers to the list of servers and so on. Uh, on the other hand, storage role will be have uh, will have uh, finite granularity, of course, because uh, one doesn't uh, want usually to remove and recreate a volume with file system just to change one one attribute. So this one will have finer, uh, finer granularity of changes. So we took a pragmatic approach, and the granularity of changes uh, corresponds to uh, to the use case that we are addressing. So a conclusion, I would, I would say that administrative slides will, of course, uh, never be completely boring. There will be always interesting things, both in the positive and negative sense. But, uh, our work, at least, I think, uh, can help with addressing one, one source of negative surprises, which is those changes to the system interfaces. And especially if you, if you are using Ansible anyway, uh, give a try to our role. If, if they address your, your scenarios, because uh, they provide a, a simple in interface to the system as well as abstracting away those, those differences. So it's uh, fully supported on Rails 7, 6, and later, except for the postfix role, which we consider still the interview. And it's uh, available as an RPM. And for users of other systems, uh, you can use Ansible Galaxy to install the, the roles from, uh, from Galaxy, and uh, they will be soon also available as an RPM similar to, uh, to RHEL in, uh, in Fedora. This is our homepage, and this has links to the GitHub uh, project page and Ansible Galaxy page, so thank you, then for your attention, and now it's time for questions.